Samson's Downfall In our last story, we saw Samson's strength and pettiness on display. He developed a rivalry with the Philistines over his wife, and out of anger and revenge he burned their crops and slaughtered one thousand of their men with the jawbone of a donkey. God used Samson's strength and foolishness as a weapon against the enemies of Israel. Now we see Samson's descent into his own sin. His foolishness abounds, and he finds himself captive to a witch in the armies of the Philistines, as inspired by the Book of Judges. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our last episode, we saw how Samson used his strength both to exact his own revenge and as a tool in God's hand to push back the oppressive Philistines. His anger and quick temper left a trail of destruction and death across the region, but God used even Samson's failures to weaken Israel's enemy. Ultimately, Samson was filled with God's Spirit and righteously defended his fellow Israelites, leading to him being judge over the people for 20 years. But tragically, Samson's lust, disobedience, and foolishness resurface, and rather simply compromising with danger, he plunges headlong into sin. Entangled with an evil woman, his strength will be no match for her hold on his mind. It is a tragic tale of unchecked sin. But still, God will use Samson to ultimately win a victory over the Philistines. So listen to today's reading. It was dark, and the city of Gaza had fallen asleep. The only lights came from the dim candles illuminating the small room where Samson and the prostitute lay. Their shadows moved against the walls as they moved to one another's bodies. Throughout the night, Samson drowned out his sorrows and insecurities in the sheets of the prostitute woman. The Gazites had caught word that Samson was staying in the city. They surrounded the prostitute's home and set up an ambush at the gate of the city in case he escaped. They kept quiet, planning their attack for when dawn broke. They slept, not knowing that Samson escaped out the window at midnight. Stealthily, Samson moved through the alleys of the city towards the front entrance. Samson stood in front of the gate. The gate was looming over Samson. Four times his size and made of pure steel, the gate stood as a barrier between him and freedom. Samson gripped the steel beams of the gate and began pulling. Samson's arms were hard as stone, and his legs were planted firmly in the ground for support. Slowly, the steel began to rip off its hinges, and the gate lifted from its foundation. Samson rose the gate above his head and began to walk out of the city. With the strength of an elephant and the stealth of a cat, Samson stole Gaza's main form of protection and escaped into the mountains. Meanwhile, the Philistines were planning their attack against Samson. The lords of the Philistines plotted and schemed as to how they would topple the mighty man of God. Clearly no army, large or small, could come up against him, and they knew no other way to bring him to his knees. They did, however know of one weakness Samson had, a weakness for beautiful women. They sent for a woman named Delilah and paid her 1,100 pieces of silver to seduce him. She came to Samson with smooth lips and a sharp tongue. She stroked his hair and kissed his neck. Samson, in an instant, fell deeply in love with Delilah. Her seductive voice and clever words lured Samson into a daze of passion and vulnerability. She whispered in Samson's ear, Where does your strength truly lie? She leaned against him. Samson could smell her hair. She was intoxicating to him. How would anyone be able to capture you? Samson was enraptured by her, but still in his right mind to toy with her. Samson answered her and said, The secret is seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried. Once they bind me, I become weak like any other man. So Delilah playfully bound Samson up, while the Philistines lay in secret, waiting to ambush him. Then Delilah tested the strings and yelled, Quick, Samson! The Philistines are coming! And in an instant, Samson broke through the strings ready for battle. 
so the secrets of Samson's strength were still a mystery. Delilah was upset with Samson, but Samson continued to toy with her. Three times she bound him, and three times he escaped, for he thought they were playing as lovers do. But Delilah only loved one thing, silver, and she would not receive it unless Samson was captured. Delilah wept in front of him, saying, How could you tell me you love me when your heart does not trust me? She cried, yelled, and pressed up against him and begged. Day after day she wore him down, and Samson became vexed beyond all reason. All of Samson's inhibitions melted like candle wax against Delilah's flame. So he told her the source of his strength. I am a Nazarite by birth. A razor has never shaved my head, and if it did, my strength would leave me. Delilah was satisfied. In the secrecy of night, she had Samson rest on her lap. She stroked his hair as Samson fell into a deep sleep. Delilah smiled as she looked at Samson, although she did not smile out of affection or love for him. No, she smiled because the Philistines were waiting just beyond the walls of her bedroom with her silver. She nodded towards the door and a man approached Samson with a blade in his hand. Together they shaved off seven locks of hair from his head. She tormented him, whispering lies and curses into his ears. Then with a loud shriek she yelled, Samson, the Philistines are here. The Philistines sprung onto Samson and tackled him off the bed, onto the floor. Samson struggled, waiting for a burst of strength to send the men flying through the wall. But he had no strength. You see, Samson's strength was not in his hair— but in the favor of God. Samson had spent most of his adult life straying from God, and he had now broken his last vow. The Philistines bound him and pulled his head back. The Philistine lords looked down at Samson with cackles. Samson looked behind them as Delilah counted her silver. Tears streamed down his face as he pulled and kicked in futility. Samson looked at one of the men standing above him, he turned to the fireplace and pulled out an iron rod. Its tip was orange from the flames. He slowly approached Samson and drove the tip of the rod into his eyes. Samson wailed in pain, and his screams woke up the entire city. The men drug him out of the house and shackled him to the wall of the Philistine temple. Samson knelt in total darkness. Weakness was new to him, and he yelled in pain through the night. The lords of the Philistines gathered together at the temple to make sacrifices to their gods, Dagon. Together, three thousand Philistines gathered to celebrate the capture of Samson. They drank, danced, and reveled in victory. The fire raged in the center of the large hall, and Samson could hear the snickering of Philistines passing by him. The Philistines called for Samson to be chained in the middle of the great hall to entertain the guests. Their hearts were merry and drunk, and they laughed at Samson and threw things at him as he was being brought to the center of the temple. They chained him between two pillars that held up the temple roof, and all three thousand men and women mocked him. The music grew louder, and they worshipped Dagon into the middle of the night. Samson was lost in his thoughts. He was supposed to be the deliverer of Israel, and here he stood blind and bound. It was not the Philistines that trapped him there, but his own pride and lack of obedience to God. Samson raised his head to heaven, unable to see. He took a deep breath. O oh Lord, he shouted, remember me and strengthen me just this once. And then Samson began to pull on his chains that were attached to the two pillars. The Philistines noticed and laughed. Samson continued, and small cracks began to form around the foundation of the pillars. Samson screamed as he tore at the pillars. The Philistines' smiles began to fade, and Samson whispered to himself, Let me die with the Philistines. And in that moment he bowed with all his strength and pulled the pillars apart. The entire temple floor fell from the sky, and the walls toppled on top of all three thousand Philistines below. Flames erupted from the center of the temple as stones crushed the backs of God's enemies. A cloud of smoke covered the wreckage.
dawn had broke, and the sunrise peaked above the hills. In the middle of the wreckage, among the bodies of the Philistines, lay Samson's dead body. In that moment, Samson accomplished more in death than he ever could during his life. The strongest hero Israel had ever known experienced more victory and sacrifice than he did selfishness. The story of courageous self-sacrifice would be perfected later on in another hero God sent. His sacrifice would topple the greatest enemy of them all. Our reading begins with Samson giving in to the cravings of his flesh. This Nazarite man, born with such promise and set apart for God, was anything but holy and separated as he wandered into Gaza. Samson made arrangements with a prostitute and took her to bed to satisfy his lust. His sin was not hidden either because word got out about the Hebrew strongman and hero in the Philistine city. It was the chance they'd been waiting for to defeat the one man that stood between them in total dominance over Israel. But Samson snuck out under the cover of night, taking with him the whole city gate, which he ripped from the ground. The Philistines' attempt to defeat Samson had been thwarted again. But it wouldn't take long before an even better opportunity arose for the Philistines. Samson became enamored with another Philistine woman named Delilah, and she was trouble with a capital T. Delilah captivated Samson, and the leaders of the Philistines saw their chance to pounce. They summoned Delilah and paid her to seduce Samson and get him to give up the secret to his strength. They knew that without his might, Samson was just another man, easily defeated. Delilah happily obliged, her eyes on a prize of silver, a payoff. So she asked him how he could be defeated. How could he be subdued? What is the source of his strength? Now, Samson was not completely stupid. He wouldn't give up his secret easily, but he could still have some fun. And we see how clever Samson can be, and he no doubt knows it, pridefully thinking nobody can get the better of him. No wonder the Bible tells us that pride comes before a fall. Three times he gives her a wrong answer, and each time she tries and fails to subdue him. Finally, she tells him if he loves her, he will tell her his secret. Tragically, Samson reveals that his head must never be shaved. That very night, his head was shaved, and with the breaking of the Nazarite vows, God's favor departed along with his strength. And for the first time ever, he was powerless, but not because of his hair, but because of his broken relationship with God. The Philistines bound Samson, mocked him, and gouged out his eyes. Blind and bound, Samson was imprisoned and made to turn at a millstone over and over. Here we see the blinding and the grinding power of sin. He could hear his captors worshiping their god, Dagon. Not only were they mocking Samson, but mocking the god who gave him his strength. Samson's physical blindness and bondage were a direct consequence of his spiritual blindness and bondage to sin that had put him in this terrible place. And as he turned the mill, Samson must have talked to God and seek forgiveness for his sin. His hair began to grow back. It became, again, an outward sign of an inner renewal of his faith in God. So when Samson is paraded into the center of the temple to be mocked, he asks to lean on the columns, and then he cries out to God in Judges 16, 28, O Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once, O God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. He prays for one more opportunity to glorify God. God fills Samson once more with superhuman strength, and he pulled down the pillars, destroying the pagan temple and killing 3,000 Philistines. Samson sacrificed his own life to defeat the enemy. It is a powerful story of renewed faith and repentance. And no matter how far we may have fallen, God will pick us up if we trust in him and once again find our strength to go forward. Dear Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness. We know, like Samson, we have failed you many times. But we also know that when we trust in you and revive our hearts in you through repentance and faith, we can be restored. God, restore our hearts in you. And may we repent of every sin that we may stand strongly for you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thanks for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. If you want to know more about the Lord, how to know Him, how to serve Him, and be His disciple, then let me encourage you to visit my website, which is jackgraham.org. We would love to assist you in any way possible as you grow in your journey of faith. Again, that's jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.